Hello, I'm David R. Lewis. Welcome to Theater of the Mind. In this scene from Fear of the Father, Ruby and Crockett have been apart for the Christmas holidays. Ruby arrives back at the townhouse on New Year's Eve, five days earlier than planned. After a joyous reunion, they find themselves discussing the nature of their relationship. Ruby, what the hell is going on here? Crockett said, relieved he'd mustered up the courage to broach the subject. God, I have asked myself that a thousand times in the last few days. I'd like to say we're unusually bound together because of the mission we are on or that we're emotionally connected because of Rachel's death. And both of those are true, but they do not account for this myth. I fear we're in love, Crockett. I've known for some time that we love each other, and I can deal with that. I'm just not exactly sure what to do with the prospect that I may be in love with you. Crockett rubbed his face. Don't get me wrong, Ruby. The prospect of you being in love with me makes my toes tingle. I just don't know if I can handle being in love, not just with you, but with anybody. Rachel? Ruby asked, one eyebrow rising. Rachel. Okay, she said. It's easy to see how you feel that way, and please understand that this mess is just as screwed up for me as it is for you. I'm not trying to talk you into anything. That's not the purpose of what I'm going to say. Got it? Got it. In all honesty, I suspect that we have been a bit in love with each other for years, but avoided that can of worms and decided to just love each other primarily because we are both sexually attracted to women. Well, that could do it, Crockett said. It has so far. This is a very strange situation, Crockett. It is possible to be in love and not be lovers. If we were both gay, it would balance quite nicely. See, it's simple. You just have to start being queer. Ain't likely. Why don't you just stop? Ain't likely, Ruby said. I do know that I have never missed anyone in my life as much as I missed you. Likewise. Crockett said. Not even Rachel? Crockett stared at his hands for a moment, then raised his gaze to her face. No, Ruby. Not even Rachel. Jesus, this isn't remotely fair to you, Crockett. It's not fair to you either, sweetheart. Well, yeah, but I'm the deviant here, not you. You have a complete right to expect certain things from a loving female companion, you know. Yeah. We've been over this before, Lacoste. I don't expect one damn thing more from you than you're prepared to give. Ruby took his hand. Christ, Crockett, where the hell do you hide your wings? Oh, they're at the cleaners. I keep getting them dirty. I am who I am, David. Crockett smiled. Well, it's been good enough up till now. So what the hell do we do about all this? We live together. We are living together, Crockett said. See, it's working already. We spend time, we enjoy, we see if this continues on an emotional level or just burns out. There's no right or wrong here. There's just what there is. I think we can relax and let whatever's going to evolve, evolve. So what about when all this detective shit is over? Answer me this, Crockett. Are you happier with me than without me? Oh yeah, a lot. Then as weird as this whole thing is, we continue to live together. Maybe a duplex or something equally bent. I don't know. I'm flying blind here, Crockett. Well, I know one thing, champ. What's that? I'm just awfully glad you came home. Ruby glanced around the newly rented townhouse as if she'd never seen it before. I really did, didn't I? She said, tears in the bottom of her eyes. Home. Wow. I came home. Fear of the Father is available absolutely free on Amazon and many other ebook locations. I'm David R. Lewis. Thanks for joining me at Theater of the Mind. Featured at the snack bars, Crockett's favorite, Humble Pie.